So I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about our role as teachers and how important it is, the role of the teacher and the role of the parents. Before we start, I'd like you to do one thing. I'd like you to clap your hands once. <laughs> now, clap your hands with one hand. Okay. No sound. One hand is the teacher. The other hand is the parents. We have to work together. It's very, very difficult if we don't. Um, there's no sound. <laughs> there's no impact. And as teachers, it's very difficult if everything is on our shoulders. So we need to have the balance between the teachers and the, the parents. If you look at this picture, I am no mathematician. In fact, I am... I flunk maths, but I know enough about maths to know that if you're looking at the top angle, the two bottom angles affect it equally. And this is with the child. The child is the top angle. The two bottom angles, one is the parents, the other is the teacher. Now, I'm going to look at the, the role of the teacher first. And then we're going to look at the parents, and then a little bit the child, okay? Because it has to be well balanced. I'd like to start by reading you a very beautiful poem. Now, I realize that because of the language, some of it may be difficult to understand, but somebody will help you with it afterwards, okay? but I would like to share this poem with you, and then we'll discuss it. Why am I showing you this poem? Okay. The poem is called The Old Violin. And it's by a woman called Myra Brooks Welsh. Twas battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to spend much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bidden for this? he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar, one dollar, then two, only two. Two dollars a bidden, say three. Three dollars once, three dollars twice. Going for three, but lo, from the back of the crowd, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loosened strings, he played a melody passing sweet, the kind that haunts and clings. The music ceased and the auctioneer, with a voice that was soft and low, said, now what is bid for the old violin? And he held it up with a bow. A thousand dollars, who'll make it two? Two thousand, say three. Three thousand once, three thousand twice. Three thousand gone, said he. The people cheered, but some exclaimed, we do not quite understand what changed its worth. And the answer came, "'Twas the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with a soul out of tune and battered and scarred by sin is auctioned cheap by the thoughtless crowd, just like the old violin. But the master comes and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand. O oh master, I am the tuneless one. Lay, lay thy hand on me. 
Transform me now, put a song in my heart of melody, Lord, to thee. Now, this is a very beautiful poem, and I think all of you will have understood enough that it is about an old violin that has no worth. Nobody wants to buy it. And then a great musician comes, a master comes, picks up the violin and plays a beautiful melody, beautiful music. And when people ask, why? What is the difference? Why now the violin has a great worth? It's very expensive. The answer is, it is the touch of the master's hand. Now, let me ask you, as teachers, what is the significance of this poem and teaching? Please, if anybody speaks, please use your mic. Yes. Create, create the students as a masterpiece by the master hand of the teacher. So who is the master? The teacher. Okay. Anybody else have any feeling about this? To me, it is this. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> to me, this has two meanings. One, just as he said. Yes, you want to say something? Yes. Thank you. According to me, uh, teacher is God. When we allow our body to, to surrender to God, God will use us what God wants to us. Thank you. Okay. Well, that really says what I was going to say, that to me it's two levels. Yes, we have to be that master as a teacher. We have to be able to touch the lives of the children. But we also need to be touched. And when we open ourselves up and we become that vehicle, that channel, if you like, then we become much more effective. Now, it's very easy as a teacher to look at children and to make a judgment. Oh, that, that child is so difficult. That child is no good. And even sometimes we might say that child is bad. That's a bad child. But I would like to make a suggestion that we change that way of looking and we say there is no such thing as a bad child. <clears throat> But what we can say is, I do not accept that behavior. I do not like that behavior. You can even say that behavior is bad. But it is not the child that is bad. If we can make that separation, it makes all the difference. It certainly did in my life, because I know it's so easy to judge. <laughs> but when we really consider just like in the silent sitting that we do, that the same light that is in my heart is in the light, in heart of everybody else, then we cannot say that that person is bad. But what we can say is their behavior is bad or their behavior is unacceptable. So I think as teachers, this is the first thing that we have to look at and it's very, very important. So we can say in a way that the teacher is like a gardener, that we are planting seeds, that we water the plants with all the 
love and different values. We also have to be the one to pull out the weeds. You know, sometimes there are things that we don't want to be there in the garden, so we have to pull them out. So we nurture the plant, we look after the plant and let it grow in a very balanced and good way. I don't know about in Indonesia, but I know in Thailand and I know in a lot of countries that being a teacher is not considered as great, for instance, as being a doctor. People would rather be a doctor or be some um, other profession. And unfortunately, some people who don't make the grade of being a doctor or whatever, they become teachers. This is very sad, because if you think about it, there is no job that is more important than the job of a teacher. No job. What does a doctor do? A doctor helps to heal a sick body. But what does a teacher do? Tell me, what does a teacher do? Tortured and good. It helps to make the children good. It, the teacher brings up a young child, a young soul, into maturity. So they become a useful citizen, a useful person in society. This is such a great job. Now, on these lines of what I was just saying about don't look at a child as being bad, I'd like to tell you a story. This is something that happened in America, in New York. And in New York, there are some areas, like in all cities, that are very run down and very difficult um, some of these areas, there's a lot of problems with drugs, with alcohol, with parents being in prison, etc. And there was one teacher who was teaching in a particular school, and he was dealing every day with, with students that had many, many problems. And in his class, his older class, he had one boy who was very difficult and going through a lot of difficulties. What we would call delinquent, um, at risk, a, a, a very difficult teenager. This boy didn't want to learn. He caused a lot of problems in the class. Sometimes he was violent, etc. So one day the teacher, he called him. He said, please come and see me. And the boy at first said, I don't want to talk to you. I have nothing to say to you. Um, you just, he just felt the teacher's going to scold him like everybody else scolds him. But the teacher said, no, I really want to help you, so please come. So the boy came, and at first he was abusive. He, didn't, he was not responsive in any way. But the teacher persisted, and he kept saying, I, I'm not trying to scold you. I'm not trying to find fault in you. I want to help you. So then the boy said, give me a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper like this. And so the teacher gave him, and he gave him a pen. And the boy drew this on the, on the paper. And he said to the teacher, what do you see? Now, I think most of us, what do we see? A black spot. Yes. <laughs> That's what we see. But this teacher, when he looked at this, he thought, this boy is showing me this for some reason. And he thought very, very carefully. And he said, what I see is a big expanse of white. And in the center, a tiny black dot. And the boy was very touched. And he even started to cry. And he said, you are the first person who has noticed the white. Everybody else just sees the black. And unfortunately, this is how we tend to see the world. 
if you think somebody is doing, we working with somebody or we know somebody very well, and one day that person does a mistake. We don't think of all the good things that person has done, but we jump on that mistake and we get upset or whatever. We see the black spot. And it's very easy as teachers to see the black spot in our students. But we should also try and train ourselves to see the white. Because in every child there is more white. In all of us there's more white than, than black. But we tend to just focus on that black. Now, thinking about teachers, we have to start thinking about ourselves. Just look at what this says. Teachers are remembered more for what they were than from what they taught. Now, many of you, some of you, not so long ago you were in school, but many of you, it's quite a long time, <laughs> like myself, <laughs> since we were in school. So I'd like to ask you, what do you remember from school? Can anybody tell me what do you remember most about school? Can you use the mic, please? When I remember about the schools, I remember my teachers, my friends, yeah, the sweet situations of my schools. Yeah. Thank you. When I remember in my school, I, I remember about as a prom teacher, like a homework, like a, the, to discuss in the class, something like that. Thank you. When I was in school, I remember uh, some teachers just just teaching, but now but sometimes uh, often they are don't understand what I feel, what I need. Thank you. I remember the some good teachers and some bad teachers. <laughs> when I was in school, all of teachers say that uh, all of subject is very important, but I don't know, uh, but I don't remember again about what they, what they, they give to me. Yes. Well, you've all confirmed what I'm saying here that we don't remember all the things that were put, stuffed into our heads. And if we think as teachers how much we're trying to put this information into the heads of children. But be assured, they won't remember. Yes. What they remember is you. Until quite recently, I still had nightmares about my headmistress. I was so tormented by her <laughs> that <laughs> really that even 20, 20 or 30 years after I left school, I still had nightmares about her. And the result was that any subject that she taught, I didn't learn anything at all because I, all my energy was being, in so, being frightened and that I didn't learn anything. So we must always be very sensitive of how children are feeling towards us. Because if they feel comfortable in the classroom, if they feel comfortable with us, then they will learn. If they enjoy it, they will learn. If they don't enjoy it, they won't learn. It's as simple as that. So we have to start asking ourselves some questions. We have to start looking.
William Ward said, he talks about the great teacher. He says, the mediocre teacher tells. The good teacher explains. The superior teacher demonstrates. The great teacher inspires. And it is those teachers that we will really remember. And what they taught, we will also remember. Because they touched us somewhere deep down. It's like what one of the girls said.